Hi everyone, it's Dr. Krad. When someone has a mature or very dense cataract or a vitreous hemorrhage, ultrasound becomes necessary to measure the length of the eyeball. Ultrasound can be performed by touching the front of the eye with a probe, or even better, by immersing the eye in a water bath and then placing the probe in the water without having the probe actually touch the eye. There's no indentation of the cornea. This is called immersion A scan. Hay una luz roja. Sí. Puede mirar sí. a la luz? Sí, sí. Okay, mira a la luz. Sí. Now, get the inside right here. Yeah, it's like that's perfect. So, I puede sentir un poquito de agua. Uh -huh. All right, es todo. All right. Cierra el ojo. I'll record here. So, it just recorded 10 measurements from the front of the eye to the back. And so now we're gonna switch eyes. I'm gonna go to the left eye. All right, and we're gonna start. Okay, so aquí. ¿Puede mirar a la luz? Sí. All right, mira a la luz. It's important. Yeah, mira a la luz, okay? Mira a la luz. Okay. Es todo. Muy bien. Mm. Cierra el ojo. Perfect. Muy, muy bien. Okay, puede abrir los ojos. Okay. Okay. So now I have 10 readings and it shows me um, the anterior chamber depth, lens thickness, vitreous length, and total uh, length of the eye. And it gives me an average. While the device will provide lens powers to choose from based on built-in formulas like the Holiday, it doesn't have all the formulas of your more robust optical biometer. So although I appreciate the lens power recommendations from the device, I personally don't use them. I take the average axial length measurement and plug it into my optical biometer. I then use the Barrett formula for most of my cases. This has worked great for my patients. So if you're still performing A scans by touching the cornea, consider switching to immersion A scans. These are much more consistent and will provide better results for the patients. Thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.